My name is Teresa Santa Lucia. Today is February 29th, 2020. This year is the Hansen's 200th anniversary. And in honor of uh, this anniversary, the Hansen Historical Commission is conducting oral histories with some of our uh, uh, citizens in Hansen who have lived in Hansen for a long time and served Hansen in various capacities. And today I am very happy to have the pleasure of uh, speaking with August Silva, and uh, who I have known since I was a child, and so I'm very happy to be able to um, have this opportunity to sit with you and hear a little bit about um, your early life and your time here in Hanson. So I am going to uh, start with, if you could just, um, again, give your full name and your date of birth. I'm August P. Silva. My date of birth, March 26, 1932. And could you give me your parents' names, please? My father's name was Jerome P. Silva, and my mother's name was Marguerite C. Silva. Great. And where were your parents from? My father was from the Cape Verde Islands, mm -hmm. and my mother was from Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, and uh, where were you born? I was born in Middlebar, Massachusetts, just about 15 miles from here. Okay, and I know that you have a large family, so if you could give me your siblings' names and where you fall in that order. Okay, I'm going to give it going to the oldest to the youngest. Okay. The oldest was my sister, Andresia A. Silva, my brother, Alfred J. Silva, my brother, Joseph P. Silva, my brother, Anthony P. Silva, my sister, Rose P. Silva, and Younger than me was my sister, Jeanette P. Diaz, now, and a brother, Jerry P. Silva, and the youngest one is John P. Silva. Okay, so it begs the question, what does the P stand for? P is for Pina. P-I-N-A was from because of the name that was used many times over there in the Cape Verde Islands. Mm -hmm. Um, and now, you, so you were born in Middleborough. Did you um, live in Middleborough, or where did you grow up? I lived in Middleborough in the same house for, well, say, until I moved to Hanson, and they kept changing the street number. And that was the only thing. People said, where do you live? Where did you live? I tell them, street number, 143, they changed to 176, and then they changed it to 202. And what but was I the name of the street? Plymouth. Plymouth Street. And it was down on East Middleborough. Mm -hmm. And what schools did you go to in Middleborough? I went to Green School, which is a little school, probably about a mile from my home. Then Waterfield School, which is another mile, but it was going towards the east. To, and, and then the third school went to School Street School, then Bates School, and then to the high school. Okay. And then after high school, where did your path take you? After, as far as education goes, mm -hmm. I went to Swain School of Design in New Bedford. Took up uh, commercial art, my major, and formed the, after that was a Southeastern Massachusetts Technological Institute. A tongue to say it, they always should tell us if you can say that fast, you're going to graduate. <laughs> but that changed to now is Southeastern Massachusetts, Massachusetts University. Okay, wonderful. And um, what year did you graduate there? Uh, from high school, ni mm -hmm. 1952. Okay. Wonderful. And I know that you were served in the Army because you served in the Army Reserves with my father, so I'm just wondering when you uh, joined the Army. Uh, in 1953, it was March, March 4th, 1953, I entered the United States Army, and that was during the Korean War. And then from then, I went overseas after my training. I went overseas, and I served 17 months in Italy. Hmm. I served there because my basic training and advanced training was military police. So I was there as a military policeman serving with the Italian policeman. Hmm. And while I was there, I had a chance to go to Austria, had a chance to go to, I uh, say, Rome, Italy, and had a chance to go to Germany for a while. Hmm. So that was my active duty training and service. But following that, I came home and I liked the Army so much, I joined Army Reserve. And I served in the Army Reserves units in Taunton and Rhode Island for 28 years. And following that, I had a, another obligation, or continued my obligation, served nine years in inactive Army Reserve. 
And that was not enough for me. I didn't think it was. I joined for the Massachusetts Military Reserve, and I served nine years in the Massachusetts Military Reserve. Well, so thank that's you for my your military. service. You're very welcome. Um, and so uh, after uh, you did your military service, uh, you came back, and can you give us a little bit of background on your career and, and uh, before you moved to Hanson, uh, what you were doing? Well, but after I stayed at my school, I went mm -hmm. to Swain School of Design in New Bedford for four years. When I returned from LAT, I came back to no, in Hanson. I was uh, working for a company in Plymouth for a while, a printing company. And then I see an advertisement for a school teacher in Hanson. Then I applied for that, and I started teaching at Indian Head School, and I continued there for 21 years. And what did you teach at Indian Head School? I was the art teacher. And many, many in this, I have most many right now still in Hanson, among my former students. And it's good to see them, see how they're doing. And did you enjoy being a teacher? Yes, I did. To me, it was a challenge for me to see them starting off with the seventh and eighth grades. Mm -hmm. Then later, uh, I, they gave me the assignment for the sixth grades as well. And then after that, years later, the fifth grades. So I had all the grades at Indian Head School mm -hmm. for the time period there. That's great. Now, um, when did you move to Hanson? I moved to Hanson in 1961. 1961. And um, you met your wife in Hanson, is that correct? I met my wife in Hanson. One of the first days I was on police duty down at Camp, uh, the Cranby Cove. Mm -hmm. And she came down with her friend the first time I met her. I'm sorry, what was her name again? I didn't hear you. The name of the place? No, your wife. Oh, she's M Maria. Maria J. S was DeAndre then, but it's now Maria J. Silva. Okay. And so you met her at Cranberry Cove? That's the first time I met her was at Cranberry Cove. And how did you meet her? Well, she was introduced by the, the lady that was with her. Mm -hmm. And then my, one of my cousins, they had a anniversary party over in Brockton at the National Club. And she was there. So we got to talking, find out how she was doing like that. And she was in the process of getting more, it, learning more about the, uh, the language and so forth in this country. And I said, well, I'm taking classes uh, over there at Bridgewater State College. So I went and got a book for her on English and Portuguese. So she, that's all. And that connected that because then all we became friends and we started dating and so forth. And when did you get married? We got married on December 9th, 1972. And uh, where did you get married? We got married in... St. Joseph's Church here in, Hans in Hanson. That's wonderful. And where was your reception? My reception was at the club in uh, Rockland. Rockland. That's wonderful. And um, uh, you have had several children, a couple children. I and have. you give their names as well? Yeah, I have two children. I have a daughter, Catherine Maria Silva. Now Catherine Maria Hyde because she got married. And my son is August P. Silva, Jr. And can you give their professions and where they live now? I know my, but my daughter Catherine, she is a professor at a college, and she major is history. My son is he, in East Bridgewater, and he has two pro jobs. One, two are both here in Hanson. One, one is for Walker Clay Company, and then the other is for the Entertainment Specialist Company. That's wonderful. Um, and your children went to school in Hanson. I, re I went to school, I know, with Kathy, so I know that they did, but um, uh, they went through Hanson. And what kind of activities were they involved in? They involved in after school activities, such as you know, whatever it was provided by the, the, the schools. Mm -hmm. Then she also got involved with, uh, my daughter got involved with Campfire, which because of Campfire, now the camp, uh, Brentwood, mm -hmm. and Campfire, she got involved in that, went up to the highest rank of the Wheelow, she got that. And my son got involved with uh, the scouts. He went up and became an Eagle Scout. Oh, congratulations. That's wonderful. Um, when I spoke with you about doing this, um, I was, uh, we, we had a long conversation about all the various roles that you have served here in Hanson. And it is so impressive, all of the dedication and time that you have given this town, uh, not just in your professional life as a teacher, but all of the volunteer um, 
activities that you have engaged in over the years too. Uh, so first of all, thank you for uh, contributing so much to the town. Uh, but um, I was wondering if you could maybe talk about some of the rules that you've had in Hanson over the various years, you know, since 1960. When did you move in? I, I moved in 1961. 61. And I was asked, people in the town of Hanson were very friendly, if we was part of a kit, and someone, after being in the town only a few years, asked me if I would want to be uh, a special police officer and auxiliary police officer. I said, yes, they do. So that started. So now I knew more about the town, more about the town of Anson, being the people, how friendly they were. This was great. And after a while, I've been asked by other, being a member of other organi organizations or for, the, for the town. Mm -hmm. And I, I went on to become a member of the Board of Selectmen. I served that for three years. I was on the planning board for five years, and I was a constable. That was the most important thing. I've been a, co I've been a constable for 50, I think mean it's 56 years. 56 in years. In the town, uh, town of Hanson. And I plan to continue as long as they continue electing me. I must be doing something right. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it until I do it right. So now being a constable is an elected position. Um, can you tell us the duties of a constable and some of the things that you're responsible for in that position? Well, in that position, I receive uh, phone calls from the selectman's office or from the town clerk's office. And what it is, I usually go and they post the warrants for the town meetings, special meetings, and so forth. Or I go and post uh, these change of bylaws, which is necessary. And that's very important. Mm -hmm. Also with the town clerk, there may be certain things up the same thing with regard to especially with special things, uh, change the bylaws and so forth. Me, from time to time, I have been received a phone call from the selectman's office requesting that I go out in uh, to someone's home or certain place where they have, they're not following the rules or following the bylaws of the town of Hanson and inform them. First I do is introduce myself as a constable or could be so of the town of Hanson. I'm here to inform you that according to the bylaws, this is what you have to follow. And I explain to them with a smile, and what it, that's what it is. And sometimes I'm, I have to go to someone's home because they've been a violation of some of the, the bylaws in the town, and the com committees and so forth were concerned. So I received a notification to go to the home. Again, I would say approach, approach the individual, introduce myself, Tom Constable August B. Silva, and the town of Hanson, I'm informed you of such and such. This came from the no, sir, it came from the uh, certain committee or of the town of Hanson in regard to some violation that took place by you. Mm -hmm. And you must make that change. And they would thank me, and I smile, and we say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine that there can often be, um, when you're out there visiting people, there can be some difficult situations. Um, I like the fact that you started with, that you always start with a smile. <laughs> um, and um, have you, what makes this work enjoyable? Why have you been doing it for over 50 years? Because I'm doing something for the town of Hanson, which to me, I greatly appreciate, because many things for me, the town of Hanson has been good for me since the day I moved in. And has you know, continued by member of the various boards and committees and so forth. I feel it's very good, very good the fact that go out and perform the duty, such as posting bonds and so forth, and meeting people, many of them, and I'm saying through the years I have met many people, and they have either connected with them because of my, as a police officer, as a school teacher, and so forth, with them or their families and so forth, this was great. It's something I plan on continuing on doing as long as I'm able to do it. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us some um, stories about your time as either an auxiliary police officer or a constable? Some stories? Yes. As a, well, as a constable, I say most of it is the fact of going, take, getting the warrants from the town clerk mm -hmm. and going to the various locations in the town of Hanson. There's probably about uh, 16 locations that I had to make sure I post at least one in every precinct, with precinct, three precincts in the town of Hanson. I have to make sure. And I get, now I can do easy do that. I might memorize. I know which one to go first, second to like to the end, and make sure I have enough warrants to take and post at those uh, those uh, locations. Can you tell me some of the locations that notices are posted? I in the post town the, town, the town hall, 
the Hanson Senior Center and the library, Johns Ferry Castle, I had uh, Wyman's, Wyman's Business, I had the, t the Shaw's, at the um, little community store on, on Main Street, the variety store there, at, uh, at both of the uh, post offices, mm -hmm. police station, I said the fire station, and there may be a few others that are in stores that may be along the way. I'm now posting warrants there too. Good, good. Um, so again, just to go back to stories that you may have over the years of uh, serving in those roles, do you have anything? Well, I'm saying that with the uh, with Cranberry Cove. That I remember because that was very good because going down the Cranberry Cove, going down that road, and part of it was me at the end before it went into uh, Camp Kewanee. And what it is that one was very important, the fact that I had to take and check the identification, check and find out if they're residents of the town of Hanson. And if they were not, I said, thank you very much, and they had to leave. If they were residents, they could go take and park in the dirt park, park, the parking lot that was then now, now there's trees there, but, but then it was all big area. A lot of cars parked there, and many people, families, going down to the beach. But if they could not park in that parking area, because it's Phil, they had told me they could park back up on the street, off the road, far enough so you do not interfere with the traffic. Mm -hmm. And that was very important. They appreciate the fact that they didn't have to leave. And then going down to the beach, which is off to the left, they go down to the beach, for various things they could do, and uh, go swimming, or just a matter of just associate with their friends and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. What about as a constable? Are there any particular stories that you have as a constable that you'd like to share? No, nothing really, no, because it was just one, most, mainly I was doing with posting the warrants. Mm -hmm. I said, or oh, going to a business and tell them they are not in violation of a bylaw, or an individual who had caused some problems at uh, some one of the organizations, meetings, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So to me, not more there. Yeah. What are some of your favorite places in Hanson? You see, you know Hanson so well, I think, because of all of your various activities in Hanson. But what are some of the favorite Hanson spots that you enjoy? Cranberry Cove. Mm -hmm. Cranberry Cove, because because I was a police officer I'm there, not knowing what it was like and so forth, but it was very very important that because people could be ask me, what's the ideal place to go? I said Cranberry Cove and what it was like for to go down there. And that was the thing. You get many people watching and swimming, things going on and so forth. Cranberry Cove was one of the most, one of the most important things I'm like in Hanson. Other things we go into, with the many bogs in the town of Hanson, I have one across the street from me, and have one behind me. Mm -hmm. So I'd go from time to time and go down and watch them haul the berries from the bogs. And I was quite familiar with the bogs because when I grew up in Middle Bar, it was one of the jobs I had is Working on a crabby block, either sw either taking sand to get, or taking picking the cranberries, and that was by hand, by a scoop to pick the cranberries. So I know like that, and watch them how they do it now. This is hauling the berries off the bog, by either wet the bog, or they do it by dry picking how it goes, but hauling off with a helicopter, and that was interesting. To watch the helicopters to take and pick those bags or boxes off and haul off into the to the trucks. Huh. So you had a job as a, a, a child of picking cranberries? No, as a child? Yes. No, I was not a child. I was in my teens. You know, in I was your teens. In my teens, uh, uh, it turns to picking cranberries. We had several bogs in Middle Bar, yeah. and which was very important to do that. So that was one thing. It was interested to take and do that, to pick, pick cranberries. And every fall, it was one of those things. When they had the cranberries uh, harvest season, it was part of, uh, I did it. My, f my parents did, my brothers and sisters did it. It was great. Yeah, it's interesting in these interviews how many people had a, a job at some point uh, with regards to the cranberry bogs, you know, because it, I think it was more labor intensive back then. And so there were a lot more people who were actually out picking them or helping, um, you know, that you don't see that as much anymore. Well, then it, then it was often, it used to be a very important or very valuable, say, uh, type of employment for many that came to from another country, this foreign country, mm -hmm. regular on the cranberry box. That was a big thing for them. And the same was big thing that was also for our employment with not only picking cranberries, 
but he'd be out and getting the cranberry bogs ready for harvest and so forth. That was the big thing. Mm -hmm. And then the town of Hanson, there's just a lot of things. When I moved to the town of Hanson, I can think of five cranberry bogs. They're not all there now. But what happens is that some were c back because of the uh, uh, changes, new homes we built, and no one place with plenty of the bogs there. It's a, it's a development now. That's one of the things. A lot of developments, and they say in developments that, that happened way back when I was a selectman. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a, on the planning board, there were some major things. Developments in different places. Mm -hmm. People may have their landing, extra land, they, they want to build a house, they have a development. And I'm seeing through the town of Hanson, many developments mm -hmm. that, that have taken place since I became a member of the planning board. The biggest one, which I recall, is Brentwood. And that is a very major development that was made. And uh, the chairman myself had to go to this town where the man that was going to take and develop that and see what he had to offer up there, see what it's like. So we came back, made a presentation to the planning board. The planning board made a presentation to the town of Hanson, voted yes, okay. So now Brentwood was, is there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that there are other places in Hanson? If you were to tell people why you've made your home in Hanson um, and why it's so special to you, uh, if you were to describe Hanson, what are some of the other things that you would mention that have been important to you and your family? Well, being a rural place, being the fact that I grew up in a rural town, and also the location is ideal. The people are friendly. When I first moved there in a short period of time, I met the neighbors, and they were more welcome me to be in Hanson. And also with the... Uh, a lot of uh, homes, a lot of ba open spaces back then, mm -hmm. but now filled up in the homes they built. But also you had a uh, lot to offer. You had schools. The schools, Indian Head School and McQuarrie School, the back then it was L.C. Thomas, or Washington Street School closed shortly after they moved to Hanson. Mm -hmm. Then the L.C. Thomas was built, and then Indian Head School, and then there was the, the children go on to middle school. I'm mean, going to the high school, but now with the middle school, it's different. But uh, I think one of the most important things in the town is schools for the children. It's ideal for them to get the right education. And I say I could say more about that because I was a teacher in his school for 21 years. So I knew what my children were going to expect, and that was very important in the, for having a good school system. But also things in the town of Hanson. They had five gas stations just from my house to the Halifax line and to the Route 27 traffic there with five gas stations. That was quite a few of it in a small town, but it was very, very important. And it what is that fact that uh, the other things in the town, say the gas stations, they went on the app with the fire department, they had three fire stations. And I know where they were. They were on Main Street, West Washington Street, and the third one was on Reed Street. Mm -hmm. And the one on Reed Street is no longer there. But I'm saying that was very important. Then they had the, with the fire for safety and so forth in the town of Hanson. That was very, very important for anyone. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is just the town with the small, they had quite a few of the small store, like a variety stores uh, throughout the town. And that was convenient for uh, those who want to go shopping, go down just to buy a few items. They had a place to go. Can you just talk about those stores a little bit? What stores? Well, uh, the first one that more than many people went to, especially my sector town and the south part of Hanson, was the Gentile Market, just over the line. Many people probably remember. Yes, they remember that. That was very, very important. But then you come up. Come and this what way. did the Gentile Market sell? Can you just tell a little bit about it? They had various things that they had. Just about, about was what they sell in uh, in uh, the larger stores. Mm -hmm. They had milk. They had uh, the group groceries, they had the bread, they had the butter, they had the canned goods and so forth. They had quite a few items in there, which was probably very important for the families that move into town, especially when they're starting off. It's one of those things. Before they got, before Tans Hanson was building it more and more, and before the other stores, it was very important. And can you say where that was located? Well, I'm saying with Gentiles, just over the, over the uh, town line. Then there was a uh, run down the end of uh, South Street on the corner of South and Pleasant Street. There used to be one there. There was another one down on Main Street, which was just past where the Ocean Spray Cranberries was, which was all very important for the town. 
for people coming in, to Ocean Spray Cranberries for employment and so forth. If you just passed there on the left hand side was one. A uh, variety store there, a little one well, little mini store. And there uh, probably a few others in there, but I know those for sure that were there. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying about the what the town of Hanson, <laughs> they say back when I moved in, I thought the center of town of Hanson was Main Street, down with Ocean Spray Cranberries, with the little variety store, the banks, the pharmacies, the barber shops, everything, they're all there in that same area. I think I was there because of the fact of Ocean Spray Cranberries. That what it is. People worked there, they had a place to go if they go shopping and so forth. That was very important. And so that area probably changed quite a bit when Ocean Spray moved. Oh yes, definitely it has. It's still now, it's, with Ocean Spray, still the building is there, but not so many businesses and so forth. It, because that's what happens. Also on that same street in this area was a lumber yard. I remember it was John Foster Lumber Yard. That was that was also there. So I've been saying there was a lot of places there for people to go for as far as shopping. As far as there was barber shop was also there. I said that's that barber shop and I was saying other things were there and that's what happens. And um, I think pe- when people talk about that area, they talk about how they could walk around um, Main Street quite a bit and, and uh, go to different stop, sh- you know, stores, but there's not quite that same foot traffic that we have in Hanson. People don't bike as much or, or walk as much anymore. That, that's true, too. A lot more walk there because the fact they walk up on that street and going up a high street and going to the former the hospital that was on high street. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them go there and they deployed there. And I say to the head of the fire was with the hospital, live right on on, uh, on Main Street. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing. But I'm saying there was a lot that area was a lot to offer for the people in the town of Hanson, in that area. And I'm saying with the train station that was not as busy as it is now now, but that was also and even though the building is still there, you see it there, but that was very important for the people. Mm-hmm. As far as transportation to go into into uh, uh say Boston, whatever they're going to go. Mm-hmm. One thing good about, I say, in um, Hanson is the routes. You have Route 58, 27, and 14. Takes you, goes from another t- uh, town or city to Hanson. 58, the most important one. Very, very busy when they moved to Hanson. And I'm saying it was very busy until they did something with Route 53, because Route 53, no, it was not much then. But then people want to travel to the north or south. They're going to go south, go down the Cape, go north, go up to the South Shore, go up to Weymouth. Route 58 was the route to go. Mm-hmm. And it was very, very important. As far as business go, too. Any people traveling, going to their works and so forth. And also, if uh, businesses transporting things to the different companies and so forth, the stores, that, that was very important. Yeah. Now, I see that you have quite a few notes. I just want to give uh, you an opportunity to talk about some of the things that you had prepared. Well, the, uh, the, I'm saying about the time, I said I lived in Hanson for 59 years. And of 59 years, but I've been quite involved in many things. And what it is, I live at the same house, the same house, 612 Mount Ponson Street, and people say you live in the same house. No, I don't. I live at the same address, not the same house, because the house has changed, because they did a lot of renovation of the house. It was just a cape. Mm-hmm. Now people say you're living in a, it's just, how big it is, because I did a lot of work with because I was there, it was my home, and I was prepared also to raise my family there. Mm-hmm. That was very important. So that was a good thing. I am the first family to move to live in Hanson. Even though prior to that, I had an uncle that lived out on South Street. I used to go visit him from quite often because he was long in age, plus still his health. So what I knew more and more about Hanson. So this was an uncle of yours that lived in Hanson? An uncle that lived in Hanson. What was his name? His name was uh, Joseph Silva. But not to know because long age, I don't think he ever got out much of doing much if out in the town of Hanson because he lived there. He had like a caretaker, Mm -hmm. and that's why he was living there. But it was very important to meet people. They're going there. They said that was right. And that was the thing. And I said, no more about the town of Hanson. That was very important. And... I was asked one of the questions, one, what's my profession? My profession is artist. I've been an artist, is growing up through my life, going to high school, 
I remember that, remember things that Ron had done in the high school. They would ask me, August, would you take and do this? You take and do that? I did that, just part of it. And then uh, I'm a, they call a commercial artist. Nowadays they call it graphic artist, which you take and design things, prepare things for printing and so forth. It could be a postcard. It could be a, in a newsletter, magazine, book and so forth, post and so forth. That's what a graphic artist or commercial artist does. And as far as a fine artist, I'm also that because of drawing and painting. And to me, it was very important for me because I did a lot of painting. That was part of it. In teaching art classes. Prior to moving to Hanson, I taught not art classes in middle boys, adult even classes. Nine years I taught art. It was painting I did. And what, what kind did of I, paintings? What was it, your favorite type was, of subject? It, well, the painting is favorite subject. Landscapes, mostly landscapes. Then also some seascapes. But landscapes were my, the main object I, I would take and paint and do that. And my, my students, I'm saying, the, the adult even art classes, the subject, the, it was their choice what subject they would have. Once in a while, I set up a still life. They would take and, they would take and draw and paint that. Mm -hmm. But it was very, very interesting. Then I'm saying, at the, and with the same being a fine artist, because what you're teaching is that in Hanson. Also at uh, the library, see the Centen community room there. About five years, I taught some watercolor, watercolor paintings there, oh, classes wonderful. there. That's what I did. And then in addition to after I retired from teaching in Brockton, five of the junior high schools, I, after school classes, I went over and I taught art. I did that for a while. I said that to me it was a very, very interesting, very enjoyable to go into another town, mm -hmm. you know, in a city, and meet the children there, and also take in the, and meet their families and so forth. It was great. Do you still draw or paint? I do. I stayed in when I retired. I said, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do all this drawing and painting myself. How much have I done? I have not done. I do it from time to time, but not that much. But mainly I was doing it because I was preparing for classes for, when I taught here at the, for the school and school system, mm -hmm. or the adult classes I taught, or over in Brockton, the classes I taught. So the main thing I would do, I repair it. I don't ask my students to take and do a certain subject or project like that until I show them a sample of what I have done. Then they know what, what to expect. Mm -hmm. So it was, that was very inter interesting for me. So I'm saying that uh, I, I left the same address, but I didn't change some people. I tell the same, same address, but different house. And what it is, so, uh, some ask me, do you do anything about the building of my house, anything the history of it? No, I don't. I know it was there when I used to drive, it comes to Hanson from time to time. It was, born, it was built, <laughs> it was built in 1950. 1950. The house was built. And what it is, is it was a cape, and it was the individuals that I bought the house from, they told me that's the year that it was built, mm -hmm. nothing more. Nothing more. That's all I know about that. So I, uh, I found that Hans was an ideal place, my, uh, my place, our place we live now, ideal for the children, very place for them to grow up because we had enough land behind us and beside us to have what they need to take and enjoy their play their, as a childhood. Mm -hmm. well, and as a childhood, it was ideal for them, the uh, childhood, things they did and so forth, and grow up until their adulthood. It was a big thing for them. Big thing for you with them. So, as I said, in the years that <laughs> I've lived in Hanson, a number of years, and what it is, I belong to various organizations and committees. It was, and I'm wondering, number I was asked, and I joined because I was asked, and to me it was very, very, very positive. Thing. And you don't find that Hanson be unique because you find people, even living next door, don't even be friendly with you. They don't care what you do, what you do. Just, but I was asked to join and become part of some of the committees. Do you I remember was, who asked you? The first one uh, that joined uh, to come to become a member of the, say, police department. No, I don't remember the name, but he was one of my uh, insurance men. He, yeah, he had insurance, so since I was one of his 
because it hit one of his customers. That's why he asked me if I could do that. But others over the years, the different ones that asked me, uh, one that I called way back when I became an auxiliary police, he was the commander of the auxiliary police, was uh, Carl Barrasso. Carl Barrasso, and he laid on other things, got the selectmen and so forth that. But Carl Barrasso, sure, be the police. So by being that, then I was all with the auxiliary police and a special police, that was very, very important for me. But also then, I seen advertisement for vacancy for constable. I said, I'm gonna apply for it, why not? Because I had the police background, both in the civilian life, but also military. Because I was a military policeman for, for all those years, my active duty and reserve. So I, I applied for it and I've been a constable since then. And I just plan on continuing. A constable, on the planning board for five years. That was ideal because what we did is go around to, uh, um, before we even give it permission or given the approval of some of these uh, applications, we had to make sure that what they're gonna do is doing it right according to the town bylaws. And if we need the town's approval on some of the things, we'd have one of these uh, meetings and it's open for the public to come and they would ask questions of the per people that are applying for it. And I had a, that land, uh, that building uh, development had to be conformed to the town bylaws. They had to, no question about it. And the bylaws have changed an awful lot since then, since 1961 when I moved to town of Hanson. So I was on that, it's just, and also as a school teacher, but others, I have much to say about them, but I was on the cultural council. The what? The cultural council. The cultural and what it is, that was when they would find, check what type of programs that could be for the town of Hanson, the town of Hanson could benefit from, for there were certain types of money that was available to the county or from the state, and that's what it was. So if we see some news, we say, okay, that could be ideal for help Cranberry Cove. We're gonna help uh, other of the organization in the town of Hanson, which was great. So I belonged to that for a while. What kind of other organizations did you support with the Cultural Council? I'm not, sh I'm not sure we have a Cultural Council anymore, so. I don't know if they do. Yeah. Well, the council council, it may still be. I was on the Council for Elderly Affairs, okay. which is part of the senior center. I was a member of that council for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, for four, four of those years, I was the, I was the chairman of the chairman. But I'm saying what that was very interesting because I had a chance to help the, the seniors. To me, helping the, the children and helping the seniors is very, very important because Many don't realize it. I realized it. I realized it because the fact of teacher, but I realized it for hours beat with the seniors and knowing their needs in the town of Hanson. That was very, very important. So I worked with the, them all the time. Even for a time that they're busy going to that, this be almost every day. Not every day I worked there, but most every day. But time, period of time, I even was a, drove the van around through the town of them, picking up the seniors that wanted to go to the senior center, which is great. But the t senior center was so popular, I even went to Abington, Marshville, Kingston, and East Bridgewater, Whitman, to pick up individuals to come to a Hanson Senior Center. Because that's all popular was, because I know towns do not have one, and some do not have it. Because Hanson being popular as it is, for the, those who go there with that program they have at the, <coughs> excuse me, that have at the uh, senior center, that was very good. So that was there. How important do you think it is that the, the town have a senior center now? I think it's very, very important. Very, very important because each day we're getting older, not younger. And what happens that many, <laughs> many there are very pleased that there is a senior center. Play for them to go, to go there, they have games and different things gone, activities and so forth. Also, they had lunch because many of the seniors are home. They, the, the children, so forth, are what it is, they may go off to work or school, what it is, but uh, they had a place to go, place to socialize. And, and many very important events have gone through the senior center. Very um, important people have gone there. Like, can you give some examples of uh, important events that have gone through the senior well, center? Well, they've gone there, they have, well, they had events in regard to Safety, coming up with safety for the, uh, for the seniors. 
how to take care of the seniors. They have explained it they, and then explained it to the seniors also that their, their family members can also go there and also be able to make know the fact what's ought to offer. They have things with regard to voting. They have got taxes. They have uh, uh, other things they have for the offer to the seniors. It's very good. How to take care of the seniors. A lot of people don't know how to take care of a senior. Mm -hmm. They don't know because the fact they grew up in, and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But it, it's very important, very place for the, for the town of Hanson to have. And the town of Hanson should continue supporting, in my opinion, continue supporting the senior center. Mm -hmm. And back then, way back then, they, they, had two, they had two vans. Now they only have one. Not because of less people going there, but because they probably found that there was not a great that need for a second van. Mm -hmm. But it's very important that they have their own van and transportation, transporting the eight seniors. Go to their homes, I'm saying the different locations, I mentioned various towns, and then bring them home. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important for them. That's great. Um, we have about five more minutes, so I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about some other things that you may want to, uh, to do here in this interview. Well, I said I have a lot to talk about and tell people, and they say, what do you have to say? Because people, I go places sometimes, people say to me, August, you have a few words to say? I said, no. You don't? No. I said, I'm a retired teacher. I, the teachers don't speak, say only a few words. Mm. Oh, okay, then, that's what that, But I'm saying, but my involvement and connection, because I'm saying in, the, in this town, being a teacher, and down the Cranberry Cove, because sometimes when the new residents come in, I recall one parent, the father said, to the children, see Mr. Silva. He's going to be your art teacher. He is, but he's a police officer. See, that already when I go in the, in the back to, in the classroom, those students, the children come in, they, Mr. Silva. And when the first question they ask me, where's your gun? <laughs> they ask me where gun is. But I'm saying, but what's very enjoyable with the connection in teaching, and Cranberry Cove because of the children. That was very, very important. And other things that belong to town and Hanson. And because of my commitment, my involvement, being a law enforcement officer in the town of Hanson, they had any questions or concerns, they would ask me. Mm -hmm. They didn't go to the police station, no. They did not go. And plus, I was still in the military, and they knew what that was. Then they asked about the military. I would tell them about the military. I want to join, I'm going to go in the Army when, when I get older. I'm going to get big, I'm going to go. To me, it was I had a, a background and that made them appreciate the fact that I was not just someone out from a college, just graduated. I had a diversified background. And it, my growing up on a farm, working in various places, and the town offices I was holding at the time, or had, it was very important to the children, very important to them. And I see some now in the town of Hanson, and they'll thank me. They'll thank me for the fact that, that I was who I was. And I plan to continue to be that way for the next, not, you know, that, I'm gonna be that, no, I'm not gonna be that old. Not, <laughs> not gonna be, no, I'm not gonna be not next, next 80, 80, 80, <laughs> 80, say 80 plus years, no, no. But I'm saying, but while I'm in Hanson, I do what I can for the town, and also with my children, they have done a lot for the, they have not, in a way, because in joining time, joining organization, my daughter joined the Campfire Girls mm -hmm. and went up to high school. My son joined the Boy Scouts, became an Eagle Scout. But was also the support he had from the residents of the town of Hanson. And to me, living in Hanson, been an honor to live in Hanson, on the civil town. Might be on the boards or committees, what it is, but an honor to be part of the town of Hanson. My last, 50 plus years. Well, it's been an honor to sit here with you and have this conversation. So thank you for taking the time. I oh, really you're very, it. very welcome. I'm saying that uh, <laughs> answering questions, being question like that, no, because I'm not in the position usually to have someone asking me questions. Unless I'm applying for something, then it's different. But other than that, it's, uh, I'm usually on the other end of the, I'm asking questions <laughs> or giving information to people that want to join and so forth. And, but it's, it's, it's been great. It's been great. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very, very welcome. <laughs>